Now to get the flywheel off, of the, this is a K301 Kohler, 15 sixteenths. I just use an air impact. That way you don't have to fight to turn another motor so bad. Next thing I'll do is I'll just hit that with a little bit of penetrant oil. Now we're going to use two of these holes, so I'm going to try to blow them out and see if I can get them cleaned. So I'm just using a harmonic balancer puller from a car, and I believe these are 3 8 bolts. If they don't go in, you'll have to chase the threads with a thread chaser or something. But these seem to be going in. You want to make sure that you get these in several threads. You don't want it to be just one or two threads because then when you go to pull you'll just rip the threads out of the flywheel and you don't want that. Now from there I don't know if you guys can see how crooked that is. This bolt's drawn in a lot farther than this one. It's at an angle. You don't want that. to be more straight. Straighter the better. Now this head pivots so this will this part will stay still and it'll turn inside of this part so I don't have to worry about the crankshaft. And I'm still a little bit crooked. So let's back it out just a little bit more. Now I ran I know that one um, was in farther because I did that on purpose to show you. Usually you don't back the bolts out unless you know they're in there a good ways. Now I have errors, that's what I'm going to do. You could put something in here and hold it. Don't hold the fins because you'll break them. You can hold in here though with a big pry bar or something. <laughs> then you just want to tighten this up and Right there, come off. I always remove the key. I don't like putting the flywheel back with the key where it was at. Also, I'm going to be taking this off and I'll need it out of there to get out of the way of the seal and stuff. If you just take and try to get up under it, now if you some of them's going to be tighter than others, Let me get that thing out there. Some will be tighter than others, and if you do get anything you feel from the chisel, you know, little dents or burrs or something, you can just take a file and dress it right back up. Because you always want to clean these anyway. And you want to clean that slot out really well. And here in a minute, we'll, I'll show you when I go to put it back, what I do. Very important to clean up inside there. You could take some sandpaper, little wire brush, scotch bright, something. Get in there and get the biggest scale and everything off of there. Get whatever you can. And then you want to take a screwdriver, something in that slot. Just make sure you get them corners really clean. A lot of times I'll take a file that just fits and just, I'm not really laying it down file. I'm just using the edge as like a scraper. It'll get a lot of that out of there. Same thing on this crankshaft, get them corners down in there, and I will do the same thing. Try to get as much out of there as you can. You can take scotch bright on the outside if you need to. Sandpaper, don't go 80 grit or nothing, but some halfway fine sandpaper. And then, the next step I do is lap it in. When you get a crankshaft like that, it's taper fit, and the flywheel goes on it. Make sure you get all the rust off of it and clean that keyway out really well. And what I do, I take a little bit of this lapping compound on the taper. Without the keyway or anything like that, I put it on there and just spin it. 
So all I do is just spin the flywheel. Go around there seven or eight times and look at it. Just kind of like lapping the valves, you'll see that it's all clean and shiny and ready. Now you got to clean all the lapping compound out. Then put your keyway in, tighten the nut down, and torque it. If you don't torque it and clean the shaft, you'll start shearing flywheel keys real easy. No, they I, they have flywheel holders. You could put something, a belt or something, around the outside of this and maybe hold it. You could run these two bolts in and then put your bar in here. When you put the flywheel on and you go to tighten it down, this ain't the proper keyway for that slot, but if you put the proper keyway in, put a crescent wrench on there, it'll grip. And the crescent wrench really doesn't do no damage. If he's worried, you could put something like a rag under it or something. The thing you don't want to do is this. It's so tempting, but what usually happens is missing fins. Now these bolts could bend on you, but even if they bend, usually you can get them right back out. Just don't break your fins off. Now this is in a taper. Same as a crankshaft, so it tapers down. So you got a crankshaft. Well, let's get something to write. Let's try this marker. You got a crankshaft coming up here. And then it tapers in. Alright. Some of them will have a bolt threaded in. This one happens to have a stud coming off of it. Or a piece that's got threads. Okay, now it also has a keyway. The keyway is there so that when you put the flywheel on, it gives you something to time it. Now, the flywheels taper the same, and when it comes up on here and you tighten this nut down, it wedges that flywheel taper onto this taper. And that's what locks the flywheel to the crankshaft and keeps it from turning, not the flywheel key. The flywheel key is just there for timing or alignment. The taper is what holds it. So now if you have a little bit of dirt here or something and you slide that up on there, it's going to tighten down to that dirt. It's going to leave airspace around it. Eventually what will happen is it will work this, work this, and break this out and the stuff will like scatter and fly every, out of there. And now your flywheel is going to be loose. That's why it's very important to have this this and the two inside walls of the flywheel very very clean because that is what presses the flywheel onto the taper locks it to the shaft and keeps it from turning if this is dirty it's probably going to work itself and loosen the dirt up cr you know crush it up and come loose but that's how you get a sheared flywheel key because a lot of times it will be this and this is not clean and not clean inside the flywheel. The other thing is sometimes people will not remove the flywheel key and that key whenever they put the flywheel back up on sometimes will hold on to the um, inside the flywheel and not let it go on tight enough. So it's very important that's clean and the flywheel is pressed on it good because that's what locks the flywheel on the crank not the keyway. And there you have it.